somewhere in the near future, somewhere in Europe, along a major trucking route. It's a busy weekday with heavy traffic. A tanker truck loaded with oil has just passed a city and is moving towards a road tunnel along the route. The tunnel is 30 years old and ventilation is poor. Because of its outdated design, safety is not all that it should be, and so the tunnel is closely monitored along its different sectors. To ensure safety, wireless technology has been installed to supervise traffic, air quality, humidity, temperature, and gases. The data is monitored and managed by application servers in the tunnel's operation room. Radio frequency ID or RFID sensors are placed outside the tunnel to register all cargo passing through. All cargo is required to carry an RFID tag with content and hazard information. The scanned information is sent to the application server in the operation room, which in turn automatically adjusts the tunnel ventilation accordingly. Suddenly, there's a collision involving several vehicles, including the tanker loaded with heated vegetable oil. The tanker begins to leak, spreading oil all over the road surface. A fire breaks out, spreading smoke, heat, and flames. The time is 1932, and every second counts. Let's pause our scenario to briefly explain how the tunnel system and embedded network systems in cars and on individuals automatically communicate red alerts to a number of primary responders. The sensors in the tunnel are triggered by the sense of smoke. Their only communication is via a wireless network as the fixed network will be out of function within minutes after the start of fire. A sensor attached to a person with medical problems triggers an alarm and sends an SOS message. The application server automatically authenticates and filters the incoming data and summons the emergency services within the jurisdiction network. Traffic is stopped and a huge traffic jam is developing. The tunnel sensor information is automatically dispatched triggering various activities such as changing traffic sign information. RDS messages on the FM radio band are initiated from the operation room and appear in locally situated car displays. Slowly, the traffic congestion will be managed by rerouting the traffic around the tunnel. Meanwhile, the primary emergency responders are in full action. Ten seconds after the accident, a message appeared on the screen of the local emergency dispatcher. The dispatcher locates the closest fire battalion to the accident area. The mobile command center arrives at the tunnel opening and will be, from now on, the operational coordinator on site with communication links to all systems involved. The incident commander immediately receives an overview of the situation. The robots in sectors 2, 3, and 4 
are put into operation. They spray the area with self-configuring wireless incident area network pods. The incident area network now plays an essential role in the rescue operations. All firefighters to the of the Meanwhile, the firefighters enter the tunnel. The incident commander reverses the direction of the ventilation fans in Sector 7 to evacuate smoke from the center of the fire towards both the tunnel openings. Let's take a closer look at how a modern firefighter is equipped. His vest is actually a personal area network with embedded sensors, network with a number of sensing devices. All data is transmitted to the incident commander so he can continuously guide the rescue forces and monitor their physical condition. His visor display helps him assess the situation and make the right decisions. If he has to, the firefighter can operate in complete darkness thanks to his infrared camera. The focus is on saving lives. I see four persons with medical problems. I can't understand the scan data from the injured person. Okay, I put a doctor on mine. I have the data on my screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. She suffers from a diabetes shock. Put a survival mask on her. Okay, confirm. The incident commander continuously follows the rescue operation on his mobile terminal. Hospitals are now receiving the first injured persons. The ambulance is equipped with sensors to monitor health conditions of the patients. Data is continuously sent to the hospital for real-time diagnosis in order to better prepare specialists for when the ambulance arrives. The firefighters operate together perfectly, and soon the situation is under control. The police get a report of another traffic accident. Nothing unusual. Tow trucks begin removing vehicles from the tunnel. Within hours, the rescue operations are over. For this time, since all communication traffic was recorded, next week, the primary responders will assess the accident to improve their operations. RUNIS is an international project funded by the European Commission and stands for Reconfigurable Ubiquitous Networked Embedded Systems. In this scenario, RUNIS technology will reduce casualties and assist evacuation of victims, minimize incident impact and damage to facilities, support and protect emergency personnel, prevent reoccurrence and improve future emergency response. We're in the middle of a technological revolution which will affect the way we live, work and do business. The fire in a road tunnel is just one example of how RUNIS technology can use the computer systems available in everyday devices to address real-life problems in areas as diverse as healthcare, transport, industry, and the environment. <laughs>